plowing up there. I don't know what that is. Crops. We got some some goddards back here. Um, feeding little Leo and living the dream. <laughs> so we just uh, left yesterday with the Bybees on a tour of the USA. We're gonna be uh, doing a few events along the way, and then just. Uh, Spending time with family and making memories. Making memories. Yep. So, um, let's go ahead and dive right in. Yeah. Um, so, maybe we, let's see. Did you start the recording? Yeah. So, um, we are super passionate about freedom. And uh, when we talk about freedom, you know, financial freedom is just one, one part of that. Um, freedom is about um, freedom from limiting beliefs, um, freedom from, um, you know, slavery of, of the, the mind, um, the, the body, um, the, heart. the heart. It's It's about a holistic kind of of freedom that um, I've never seen anything like the freedom that doTERRA can create. So we are um, we're pretty passionate about this idea and uh, this mission of helping people get unstuck. And while we do know that there are other ways to create freedom, we have never seen so many people be able to access freedom on so many levels, right? With sharing the oils, we're getting there um, emotionally, physically, um, mentally, even supporting spiritual health. That's all part of that process. So I love that doTERRA does that and it's just this incredible vehicle to take us there. So we thought we'd share a couple of highlights from our journey uh, just to um, as a launching place for some principles that we found um, when it comes to creating freedom. Um, so um, we started our, uh, well, let's go back about uh, 12, 10 years ago. We were, um, I'd been laid off um, and um, we were, as we were between jobs, we didn't have um, health insurance. And um, so we ended up having our third child, Ben, um, without health insurance. And so we ended up, um, he got an infection. And after about a week in the hospital, we ended up with $25,000 in medical bills, which um, at the time, um, we thought this was just insurmountable, that we were gonna be in debt for the rest of our lives. <laughs> We had had a financial faux pas that could never be recovered from, right? Yeah. So we felt stuck and we were hopeless. So um, we, um, Natalie started um, uh, learning everything she could about um, holistic and natural health. Um, she took a course from uh, Laura Jacobs, a holistic health coach, and she, um, she really became empowered and she started standing in her own power, um, learning to uh, coach others and become a source of answers and certainty for them. So um, on this journey, she was at first just giving away health sessions. Then she would charge $25 a session and then 50 and then eventually it was $200 per session for her to coach these people. And, um, and that was uh, a huge breakthrough for her to actually exchange value for her time and, and, money and energy. So I think that was one of the first landmarks was uh, coming to recognize um, your own infinite worth, that, that you are worth more than any amount of money. And, and until you re realize that, um, you'll never be able to um, create a value exchange in the current marketplace. So that was uh, the first step. 
then um, when when doTERRA came into our space, um, you know, Natalie said, she came home and said, Andy, I want to be the one of these US founder things. And I said, you're crazy. Um, when, you know, you charge for these sessions, but when it comes time to, to actually sell a product, most of the time you just give that away. So, you know, I believe that you can charge for your time, but that's not how doTERRA works. People don't pay for your classes, they pay for your product. So anyways, um, she um, uh, luckily didn't listen to me um, and she went for it. Um, she, she dove in with both feet and started sharing. And um, when she did start sharing, um, one of the first stretches was, you know, she would share not just the cheap oils, you know, like peppermint and, and lemon, she would share like samples of helichrysum and I'm like, and you're giving these vials away that are probably worth $15, $20. And she's like, honey, it's what they need. And, and so she modeled for me what was the first stretch and, and, and this principle of of it's not um, of giving more than you're comfortable giving. If, if there's not a little bit of pain, then it's not a stretch. It's not a true sacrifice. If, if you're giving within your comfort zone, then it's not uh, it's not going to stretch you because you're still in your comfort zone. So that was the first stretch. Um, the next one was um, as as we were sharing the oils. Natalie met a lot of people who couldn't afford. Um, to join, and and probably five or six of those people um, were people that I felt like were meant to be leaders in DoTerra. Like I could not let anything get in the way of them experiencing DoTerra and being able to build DoTerra. So when they wanted to build, and they um, said they didn't have the resource, Natalie would say, "Well, why don't you host a few classes?" You know, we'll pay for your starter kit, which back then was the premium kit, which was a $550 kit. And, and we ended up financing probably five, six, seven kits, which at the time was a, was a huge sacrifice for us. And, um, you know, some of those panned out and a lot of them didn't. Some of those are Blue Diamond leaders today. But it was the perfect stretch at, at that time. Um, probably the next stretch was uh, personal development. Um, we were invited to, um, you know, really take our our own learning and our own development seriously by investing in, um, you know, seminars, um, even coaches that we had never even considered. And the main reason we hadn't thought of that as a possibility is because we didn't value ourselves. So when, when your uh, self worth is low. Then, um, then you don't invest in you. Um, but that was a key turning point, I think, for us was literally to just let that value of ourselves, let that work keep going up. And then we started treating others differently as well because we realized that they had incredible work. So, so, so that was our next big stretch, uh, taking the time and the money to sometimes, you know, I flew to California for a week-long training. Natalie and I both went through a three-week course. Um, we, we ended up hiring a, a coach that we've worked with every week for the last seven years for an hour. Um, you know, these were uh, a big stretch for us. Yeah. And we tried to let those coaches go along the way thinking, okay, we've developed this. We know the skill. We keep realizing how much, you know, it's this continual progression throughout life and, and these coaches have really served us. I think one of the key principles there is teachability. Um, I found that those who are most successful in doTERRA are very teachable. They are willing to admit that they have space for growth, that they are um, not the end all be all. Um, and so they're, you know, they're humble and they're teachable. Um, so 
it takes humility for me every single week to get on this call to look for ways that I may be wrong and or that I can be better. So the next um, convention, we had lots of people that we wanted to get there, but um, you know, convention cost a few hundred bucks. And at that point, there was not a lot of value. People didn't understand the value of convention, right? There weren't hordes of people going and they knew the value of convention. It was a, a fairly new thing. So we had to sell the value in lots of cases and promote, promote, promote that event. But in many cases, the people that we knew could make a huge difference if they were there, they were not choosing in. So we had an option. We could sit back and let that happen or we could choose to invest in them. And so most of those, I mean, we, we literally did hundreds of one-on-one -on -one calls where we were just reaching out, what can we do to help you get to convention and figuring out solutions? And that translated into a lot of tickets of convention that we comped for people. If I remember right, we spent uh, $9,000 um, <laughs> for, for convention tickets. Uh, again, that was money that was, um, some of it was borrowed and we had to really stretch uh, to make that happen. Uh, but man, how many of those people are now diamonds, blues, and presidentials? Oh my goodness. Yeah, Sheree Burton was one of them, and she just went presidential two months ago. Yeah. So, so just being willing to invest back in them. I think some people have said, well, you're debt-free because you took all your money and you, and you put it towards your debt. Well, that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. We, we chose to keep some of our debt along the way so that we could invest in our team and go for a bigger win long term. Why did we choose that, Andy? I mean, I mean at the end of the day, this is a business and um, it, it takes money to, to make money. So we, we saw the potential and, and we, we went for it. Uh, I, the biggest mistake that I see among even diamonds in, in the business is they don't treat their business like a business. They start getting their paycheck and they start acting entitled to every penny of it. Um, but if you can show me one business in the universe that does not have a marketing budget, that does not spend some money to make money, then you know I'll show you a miracle because that's just that's not how business works. And we had done, we were serial entrepreneurs, right? We had tried some other businesses. We knew that principle. And so we lived that principle in doTERRA. I, I might ask you, hey, what, what is your marketing budget? What are you spending right now on um, creating more value in your business? What are you investing in? And be wise about that. Don't just go throwing it around, but know what you value and invest in that. Because long term, that's what will take you and keep you debt free is creating a business that creates massive, massive value in the world. So from there, you know, we could we could go on and on about the bigger stretches. You know, from there we we booked uh, venues to hold uh, trainings um, that were five, ten thousand dollars. That was a huge stretch at the time. Um, then we but we knew it was key to get our people trained, right? Yeah. And that wasn't happening anywhere yeah. else. We invested in a bunch of reference guides. I mean, Holy we smokes. could buy a home with all the reference guides that we bought <laughs> to, to help and perpetuate, right? The empowerment that happens when someone has a reference guide in their hands. We, we developed also, trainings ourselves. Yep, yeah, we created a whole system. Um, we probably spent a couple million now um, creating a share success system with all of the, the print material, the videos, the online tools, the apps, um, all in the uh, goal of, of empowering uh, the teams and opening the doors of freedom for more people because we do, um, the training is the key. Um, the product works, uh, the company is, is reliable and stable, so the only thing lacking is uh, training. That's what we need to develop in us, right? So once we got that handled, 
and along the way, we invested into other markets. Um, we felt drawn to Australia. We invested there. We probably invested 75 plus to get that market started in our, you know, doTERRA was investing money, but we got to choose to go down there and invest money. We had no contacts there, but we, we felt drawn. So we went down there, found leaders, and it's been not exactly the fastest haul, but now after six years, um, half of all of Australia volume is under our team, is part of our team. And then we've chosen to play in China as well. So that's been a stretch. So, um, so far the investment into the China market, just for us personally, is a quarter of a million dollars. Um, so, um, and we've got uh, our brand new diamond, uh, Victoria there, um, and uh, lots of other rising stars. Um, but it's, you know, it, it takes money. It's, there's just, there's no shortcut. Um, and you don't just, like that Natalie said, you don't just um, build a team just by throwing money at it. Um, but, uh, you know, you do the core activities, you do your pipes, and then uh, you do whatever it takes to, to grow your team and, and build your business. Some of the times, um, that means some creative problem solving, right? In one market, they may be having a hard time connecting with the right target market. They might be having a hard time connecting to these moms, connecting to women that will spread the word, um, connecting to men business builders. So you get to be creative about finding solutions there and making it work. So as we've gone along, lots of lots of challenges have come our way, but then we use all the resources that we have, our experience, our time, our money, to find solutions. Um, it's just taking that whole solution provider um, paradigm to a whole new level, right? As, um, as a powerful leader in doTERRA, which all of you are, you get to take that solutions provider piece to a whole new level. Um, so whether it's in a market or whether it's with leaders, you're just simply um, solving problems, creating value in that process. So, so as we look at this whole process, we, we were thinking of some of the things that have been really key along the way. You know, what did we do along the way? Yeah, we invested in these things, but what else was happening? Well, I'll tell you that when we were back in college, we started playing um, a game called Cash Flow. Some of you have heard of it. Um, it was created by Robert Kiyosaki based on the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? So this game Cash Flow taught um, some incredible principles. And when we're in college, we're playing that game instead of watching a movie on some Friday night. And we learned the cost of doodads. So all throughout the game, he has doodads that are that are offered, right? And if you don't partake of those doodads and you're wise with your money, you can get out of the rat race sooner. And, and we just learned that principle from that game and the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, that was probably the first time we got introduced to this idea of residual income. That's the first objective in the game is to create enough residual income to pay for your monthly expenses. And that's how you get out of what it calls the rat race. So, um, you know, this was not a track that I was on studying graphic design, but uh, throughout my career, I, I tried to look for ways like through web hosting where I could create residual income. Um, at the peak of my web hosting career, I think I was bringing in $300 a month. Uh, residual awesome, income. Honey. So, you know, pretty, pretty high producer. Um, but the principle, though, is is powerful, though. When we, when we, the, the game also teaches about how to leverage um, real estate and how to use, um, you know, small businesses uh, to continue to grow your, your residual income. So, you know, we, we tried our hand at, at uh, lots of small businesses. We also jumped into some real estate and had a rental property and um, those things. I mean, the small businesses weren't great, the real estate not so much, 
but we were committed to this this idea and this principle. And and so when DoTerra came along, we were I think we were right, ready. ready and yeah, it's not the opportunity. Absolutely. I think um, what was key about that was that we'd already experienced what was out there to offer. We could see the value that DoTerra really had to offer us. So I want to, one of the things we've learned as well, because when we started making money, we thought, oh, we, when we start making money with doTERRA, we thought we can invest it other places, right? Now, well, now we could go and get that um, real estate that we wanted um, from before that, that's really going to beef up our residual income. But um, as we experimented along the way, what we learned was when we invested in our business, that's what worked for us. And, um, and so we just watched for ways that we could invest in this most incredible vehicle that we have in doTERRA. And one of the things, like, because doTERRA can be so lucrative, right, once you get to this diamond position, um, the income's incredible. If you really think about it, compared to that $300 a month hosting that we were making after a few years um, of working on hosting and creating that residual income, you know, it's crazy to think about the amount of residual income that we can create, but it's really easy to quickly, you know, have that be our new standard of living. So um, these were some principles that we learned along the way. Um, and I love these. You can just Google these online. We've taught these at one of the Diamond Masterminds before, but these are financial principles, 10 priceless financial principles. And it's by Dr. Bernard Poduska. It's P-O-D-U-S-K-A, right there. And I love, they call them priceless because they truly are. They have probably saved us hundreds of thousands and allowed us to, like many of you saw on Facebook, that we got to pay off our house last week. And our house is not a little cottage, right? We're talking French Chateau, a couple I mean, over $2 million value we just paid off. We're driving right now in our RV that we paid cash for. And this is an RV that sleeps all nine of us. And we're super comfortable and excited for a whole month on the road. Well, these are the principles that helped make that happen. Principle one, financial problems are usually behavior problems rather than money problems. Well, how... We have seen that time and time and time again. Um, we've worked with so many top producers, and yet um, even after they hit the ranks of Blue Diamond, if they haven't looked at these behavior problems, they'll still have the same money problems. So if you're looking for um, to determine your worth from how much money you have, that's going to be a problem. It's going to keep coming up for you. You're going to make choices to buy things that are going to make you feel like you're more worth it. And none of those things will will really bring you more worth. Do you remember that story that um, uh, director of U.S. sales, Rich Higby, told us about a, another woman that he worked with. He talked about how she, every month she would come to their training and she would have a new ring. And these rings would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes but um when he got to know this woman he thought how extravagant how crazy that this woman just buys these rings well as he talked to her more he found out that when she was young and just a young girl she wanted to go down to the corner store and buy a ring and her mother would never let her do that and so you know while that ring may have cost a dollar or two at the corner store now, this woman was still looking for that, I'm valued, I'm important, I can do what I want, I can choose what I want, and she was getting that every month by investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in rings and jewelry. And um, so I love that once we get, get over some of our own issues, our money issues go away. Um, Principle two is if you continue doing what you've been doing, you continue getting what you've been getting. And that, it's 
you got to shift things, right? If you're still um, filling the stretch every month, what needs to shift right now um, so that you can get something different than you've been getting, right? You got to do something different to get something different. So what do you need to shift? Principle three is nothing that is no thing is worth risking the loss of relationship. I remember um, marrying Andy and he said, hey, you can buy that shirt if you want to, but that means I have to work two more hours to get you that shirt, right? He made seven bucks an hour and the shirt was 14 bucks. And um, I started realizing, wow, I would rather have the time with him. So keep your values um, and know what you value and go after those things. And that ties right in with principle four, which is money spent on things you value usually leads to a feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment because you really value those things. Money spent on things you don't value usually leads to a feeling of frustration and futility. So I know that, you know, when we've had money in doTERRA, we've had lots of opportunities to use that money. And um, we've learned this principle of only spending it on the things we value or else we're frustrated. We know the price of everything and the value of nothing. So again, know what you value. You can never get enough of what you don't need because what you don't need can never satisfy you. And again, we see this often. Um, if you don't need something and you buy that, it can it's never going to take care of that need. You're still going to be searching for it, just like that ring, right? The woman just wanted her mom's love. The woman just wanted permission to do what she wanted. And she was buying that ring every month to do that. Financial freedom is more often the result of decreased spending than of increased income. So if you're thinking right now, well, as soon as I hit Blue Diamond or as soon as I hit Presidential, then we're going to be more in the black. We're going to um, pay off everything. You know, the answer is not to not to pay off everything today and and scrimp. You know, you can live in abundance all the time, but make sure the abundance you live in is of time and love and it doesn't take money to live in those points. When you understand some of these financial principles, you'll be blessed more and more and prospered more and more financially. Um, be grateful for what you have. The best things in life are free and the value of an individual should never be equated with the worth of an individual. So you have incredible worth. Um, you know how to bless so many lives. I love just knowing that and understanding that and then you can take it to a whole new level and be blessing more lives. And it's not about money. Money is a fruit that will come as you create massive value for the people around you. I love that principle of gratitude. Um, I remember talking to one of our Blue Diamonds who said, I am broke. I am just always, always broke uh, financially. And, um, you know, the, the thing that was lacking was their their mindset of gratitude like they've been given so so much they're probably making 30 or 40 grand a month and um, because their mindset was I'm broke they kept attracting more brokenness and because of these you know they, a lot of those same principles connected that they were because they felt like they weren't enough because they were trying to compensate um, that no, no amount of money would ever have been enough and so um, starting with gratitude, I think, is probably the, the biggest shift that we can make. Just living in, in heartfelt, deep gratitude for every little blessing we have. Um, it makes all the difference in the world. So that's a little bit of our story. We'd love to open it up for some questions and answers. Um, here, if you have a specific situation or... Um, you know, I think um, 
it's great to be able to bounce off ideas some of the time as well. So type in your message if you've got noise around you or um, mute yourself and yeah. jump in the conversation. Okay, we might have missed something there. I have the volume up now. What questions do you have? What situations are you in? Hey, Natalie, it's Brian and Jen Pinter. Hi, Jen. Hi, Brian. Hey, so um, I actually did have a question for you. We got in the car and we, <laughs> we drove out to Vegas um, yesterday, and I posted a picture in our Facebook leadership group of us sharing a headset because we were doing masterminding calls with our leaders. And somebody's reply was living the dream. <laughs> and right, like it is like we definitely are dreaming about what our legacy is and what our future is. But where she's coming from is she thinks that we have this lush lifestyle that we're in Vegas right now. Like this isn't lush. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So what is your advice on how do I um, – how do I get somebody to understand that being at the diamond level isn't as sparkly as it seems and it's a lot of work? Because I thought I was really transparent, but I guess I'm not. Well, that's a tricky question because, um, first of all, I think you've done a good job at showing her that, um, showing her a little bit, like that you want to show them what what living the dream can look like that you have the freedom to choose where to go and that you have time together so in a lot of ways you already are living the dream okay so on the other hand um you know i i like to talk about it as investing like you know you could probably hear a lot of people that would say, I wish Natalie and Andy would have lived more of the dream sooner or shown us more of the dream sooner um, because we just were working hard, right? But that's a reality. So um, I like to talk about the working hard part as investing, investing in our future, investing in, um, investing in the dreams that we're creating investing to live the dream so um i've used that kind of language what else would you say yeah i think i think it's uh crucial to be authentic you know don't just show the the uh, peaches and panda bears but also show the you know the real life like you know maybe it's um taking care of the kids or uh you know staying out late uh doing classes or you know, staying up late at end of month, like, it's okay to show that this is work and you're not afraid of doing some hard work. Um, I think part of your question, though, is um, how can I manage the perceptions? What yeah. your team members choose to believe about you is up to them. Um, that's not your business. So, um, you know, if, if we spend too much energy on managing our, our brand or our perception, then um, I think we lose track of, of what really matters, which is, you know, why did you do this? Why, why did you get started? Why, why are you in this business? You know, if, if we get too much into, you know, painting picture, you know, the accurate picture or the right picture, I think that can be a distraction. So I'd say let her, let her think what she wants to think. Just be happy. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I think that last piece that Andy was talking about has been super key 
for us to be peaceful because we had to learn to make the right choice no matter what anybody else was saying or thinking or um and i love what byron katie says there's um there's my business there's god's business and there's everybody else's business and i need to keep that has made us free in a lot of ways um, in our business because there's all kind of judgment that can go around um Great question though, and you keep investing in what you value um, and using that those words in your hard work, even sharing your hard work, is going to help people see the big vision um, as well. So I've got a couple questions here. Let's see, do we have a, a phone question? Okay, let me take the chat question. So from Tara Wagner, is someone trying to solidify diamond? Can you give us some specific tangible ways to invest in your business? Um, you know, to answer that, I would say, you know, some of the key things, I think the reference guides are huge. They have been key for us empowering people. Um, so, I make sure that that is happening all across our team. You know, now we have so many grown up teams that it's not even an issue there, right? We've set those um, values in place. Tara's asking which reference guides. Um, can we do this? Okay. <laughs> so I think Modern Essentials has been really helpful and great foundational, but I also, I, we just love the oil, the essential life book. Um, and that's the green one with the lavender on the cover because of what it really teaches. We feel like it really empowers. And, and that's what it's all about for us. Like I want people to be able to find a solution. I don't want them to just be able to find a Band-Aid. I want them to be able to find their Band-Aid and they can do that in the quick reference section, but then I want them to be able to find a long-term solution. And those being able to get them in people's hands, like if I can tell even a new builder, hey, you can, you can get 10 of those books for $150. Like I'm gonna help out in the very beginning and I'm gonna invest in those and just get them going so that that's a model um, that happens. So whether they're doing it as a special with a kit, right? Um, or with their first LRP order, we're gonna make sure that that book gets in their hand. And if we need to give it to them at the wellness consult just as a gift, because they're setting up that first LRP order then, we'll, we'll do it there. We're just going to make sure it gets in their hands. Um, so I would say the reference guides, definitely convention tickets. I think that's key. I, you know, before any major event, I like to scan my team, right, and think, okay, who's coming? Who's who's going to be impacted or influenced by convention? Um, boy, this whole leg—that's our weakest leg. We have nobody coming here. What's the issue? How can we shift that? How can I get these key people there? And then I'll do whatever it takes to get them there. Like if it means I need to find a house for them to stay at and I need to say, hey, um, we've got your, your, we've got your housing. We've, we're, you know, going in together on this house. We'd love to provide that for you. Um, if I need to go to the next level, if this is a key leader, key person, and it's only a financial issue, I'm gonna to go to the next level. I'm gonna help them fly out or something like that. But I'm always gonna help them have some skin in the game, right? There's no like free, totally free lunch. I want them to have some skin in the game so that they show up at conventions, so that they walk away with um, great takeaways. But this is a key time. There's still, at least a couple of weeks ago, there was still 6,000 convention tickets left. Um, so we've got some availability, and I would make sure that those go to people on your team. 
right? Make sure that they're the ones that are being impacted and influenced. So that was key. And then facilitating, you know, like we've invested a ton in just monthly training so that people have, you know, that shot in the arm once a month that they're taken back to, you know, the product training and the, the business training so they can just remember um, the rest of the year and not just at convention time, why they're doing this, what it's about. So those are some, some key things to be investing in. I would say wherever your leaders are, be talking to them and asking, you know, what is it that makes the biggest difference to you? How can I best support you? And be doing those things. Those, your key leaders, wherever they are, they are your, um, your stewardship. They're your main stewardship. You take care of them, you help them grow, and everything else will work out. Um, so, Andy, yeah, you want to you want to share something there? Sure. So, uh, we uh, uh, presidential pursuit, which is a training uh, just for diamonds and above uh, who are pushing for presidential, um, and uh, Justin Harrison um, organized it. And Elise Shedeby shared some of uh, her top three strategies that she uses to solidify any rank. Um, and these, uh, these strategies really only work for diamonds and above. So um, the first one is take the bonuses that you get for your new personally enrolled um, and, and, and use those as cash incentives to those builders. So let's say you're a diamond. Um, so every time um, you have a new personally enrolled, um, you know, like premiere, um, then you're going to get an extra couple thousand dollars. So you could use those um, those bonuses to give back to that builder as a benefit to hit that rank. Um, uh, and then, you know, in, in, a blue or presidential, if you've got a person named Gold Silver, um, you know, like presidential, if you've got a person named Gold Silver, you're going to be making an extra 10, 11 grand. Um, that gives you some money to use. You know, you can call it a, a scholarship, you can call it um, a builder bonus. Um, that gives you some money to play with to really help solidify that rank. So that's one strategy. The second one she shared was um, when. Um, when you're missing volume on uh, certain legs, you can use um, uh, payback options to, to fill in the gap. So let's say uh, you're missing 1,000 PV on one leg. You could reach out to the leader of that leg and say, if you make up that, that lack, if you make up that 1,000 that PV, I'll pay you back you know, and if you, maybe the requirement is if you solidify it for the next four months, um, then I'll pay you back the thousand points, um, you know, 25% every month. So it might be 250 bucks this month, 250 for the next three months, if they can close that gap. And they can do that by either buying the volume personally, let's say they, they've always wanted an every oil kit, or, or they might uh, close the gap with uh, personal enrollments. So the, the point there is um, help spread the love, help share the vision and help incentivize them to, to get involved in the activity of, of solidifying that volume. So that was strategy number two. Uh, strategy number three is basically um, incentivizing, uh, incentivizing more sharers. So sharers are people who are sharing samples and inviting to classes. So just do the math on how many people, how many samples it's gonna take and how many butts and seats it's gonna take in order for you to make up the volume that's missing and then just pay people to do that. So maybe you've got people who are just users right now. You could reach out and say, hey, we're, we're, we're doing this um, short time. Uh, I mean, it could be temporary, it could even be permanent where let's say um, 
it's worth it for you. Uh, if, if they get uh, 20 people to classes over the next month, then you'll give them a couple hundred bucks or, you know, do, do, do the math and, and figure it out. But this is one strategy that Elise is using, especially in some foreign markets that has um, helped her solidify ranks there. So there are three really practical strategies to, to solidify a rank diamond or above. Okay. Um, if the next question I'm going to need you to, to do by video. Oh, Natalie's back. Do you want to read the next question? Yeah, I got it. So Rosie's asking, hey, I'm, what do I do if I'm at the same rank for the last 18 months or, you know, sometimes even qualifying a little bit lower. And I feel like I need to help my team increase in belief that doTERRA really is the vehicle that can create freedom for them. So I would say that's a tricky spot. And I even, you know, on the 4th of July, I saw a few people that I was really hopeful in that I felt like I did a lot to support. And yet, you know, it didn't, really crystallize for them. They didn't really grow into a leadership position. They never, they either, I think none, none of these people ever got to even silver. And it was hard for me. I saw them and thought, oh my goodness, what am I doing, you know? But um, then I just have to remember, like, I can't choose it for everyone. I have to, I have to choose it for me. So that's the first thing I would say to you, Rosie, is choose it for you. And you model advancement. You model the dream. So you're experiencing freedom. If you stop right now, you know, you've got to a sweet diamond income. You don't really need more. But if you stop right now, how many people that you could have set up for experiencing freedom themselves are missing out on that, right? So that's what... That's what I would say is you keep going so that more people can experience freedom. You add? Yep. So I um Kai was saying this is great because it's hearing how much he's we've invested helps um him feel better about what they've invested. So his question is, uh, what's given you the greatest results? So again, I'd go back to the first that we um, mentioned. The reference guides and tickets to convention have been key. He's also asking about incentives, contests, events, personal development for our leaders, etc. So um, just real quick, I do, when, when we have someone that's stuck, I will actually, you know, invest in a gift and we'll give them um, a gift with our life coach or our energy coach or whatever, you know, three sessions or something like that just to help them get unstuck because a lot of times I feel like I just don't have the time or energy or it can't be me, right? I'm their mentor in doTERRA and they need somebody outside of that. Um, and I just want to keep this, you know, sweet relationship up here. So that's been really useful. So we've probably invested thousands that way. One of the things that we always think about when we're creating um, an incentive for our team is, um, will this, um, ultimately, will this increase volume or decrease volume? So um, a lot of times um, it's really tempting to um, offer uh, oils that maybe we've, we've uh, accrued uh, by buying in as the incentives. But um, we have to remember that any product that you're putting out into your team um, could cannibalize volume that they would be buying in the next months. Um, so any incentives that we look at, we always look at ways that we can support product usage. And so the reference guides are the number one best tool for increasing product usage. But some other great ones are uh, keychain kits. Um, we also use diffusers, um, uh, the over-the-shoulder um, phone case. Um, 
you know, the, the emotions book. We've given probably a couple hundred of those emotions books away. Um, we've, um, we've even gifted uh, massage sessions with the oils, um, stuff that all of it supports product usage. It drives long-term product um, volume without um, cannibalizing the volume that people will be buying. So just keep that in mind when you're offering incentives. You know, events, um, events are a great way to uh, increase volume, uh, incentiv incentivizing people to, to come to a monthly training with giveaways, um, stuff like that. It's all, it, it all supports your, uh, your bigger, bigger goal. Sometime, um, too, with, with leaders, it might be investing in, um, like for us, lately we're loving this launch party idea. We want to recognize those new little launchers on our uh, new legs. And so maybe we send them a launch party in a box that has the, the, the new personal development reading that they're going to need for premiere. And it's got some celebration stuff you know, that maybe they wouldn't get for themselves, but it helps just celebrate the fact that they just launched their business by going elite. Um, so I think some key things like that, it's always great, whether you have a brand new diamond, um, we, we sometimes share success magazine or, um, you know, audible membership, if that's a big deal for people and, and so we'll do those kind of things as a gift. Um, I, I do love the, um, we do do the blitz and we love doing that on a regular basis with our newbies. Um, we find that it works best for a lot of people that are like into elite or not brand, brand new, but we do contests and like, Andy was saying, we just work with the things that support oil usage, um, the lifestyle pieces. I'm a real sucker for the um, vitamin case. I'll grab that and show it to you in just a minute. Uh, I, I want to tell you about another um, incentive. <laughs> was somebody asking a question? Okay, I thought somebody was asking a question. Um, another uh, incentive that um, I've heard uh, a lot of presidentials are using and had great success with is the um, spoiled incentive. So they, may, they take a, a, a box um, and they fill it with samples of just about every product doTERRA offers. So there's, um, so this is a, a kind of a customer appreciation um, incentive. So let's say they've got a, a brand new member who's maybe been in for a month or two. Um, they'll, do you know how they choose those members? I think they send, they literally send it to everyone. Um, on, on new legs. Right, right. And I think they've almost got it duplicating in such a way that they're just investing in every customer in that way. So this box goes out that it says spoiled and they get a little email that they're going to receive it, but it literally has, you know, deep blue samples, deep blue rub samples, shampoo and conditioner samples, um, toothpaste samples. I think they use little containers and even do like barrage samples all the skincare um so they're just doing it to expose um this new user to what more doTERRA has to offer and this has been really productive i think it was melina and brianne and their whole team and they've done some great stuff we could do some more research and see if we can find out more one of the things they ask the people to do who get these boxes is to post uh, a review of the products on a Facebook group. And so it not only creates this person being really excited about the new products, but it also creates a testimonial 
for their team to, to uh, drive further product usage. So, yeah. So that's one way. So one of the other questions we're getting via chat is just the, how to use your extra product if I don't devalue the product by using it for incentives. Well, we use our extra product to give out samples to new people, new um, customers, and we also use it to help business builders. Like we just had, um, what was it you were just talking to? They were they had done a booth, right? But um, they literally just brought like one of every oil to the booth. Well, because we have, you know, we have a little bit more than that, right? I like to have like three of every oil at all times. And I can have 10 the way my shelves are set up, right? That makes me feel really stocked. But I like to say, hey, if you have a booth to do, just come over, you write it down in my receipt book, you take it to go do the booth. And then if you sell it, you can put that, um, we can either, you can buy it from me wholesale, you know, and we'll do like a 10% discount, or we can just put that volume through your legs and that will help build your team and you just bring that back to me. So we just have a little receipt book and they run it that way. But that lets people, I've had brand new builders that are just starting out and I give them like three family physician kits, um, three family physician kits and you know, the other little things, right? Like the beadlets that will come with that and we'll put those in little bags. So they have that right in their house and they're ready to go. Right. Um, we also break down, we buy, um, aroma touch kits, uh, with buy-in when we need to. And those aroma touch kits will break down. Um, I remember when we had like two plastic bins full, of aromatech oils right and of course we had them in our safe because they're totally valuable but um we would take those and like have a new builder that's starting we're like hey you choose out 10 to 15 of these little five mil oils choose out the ones you think you'll use the most and use those for your best contacts right so um, we found in the very beginning, samples are great and samples are amazing and sometimes helps build the brand and um, build belief if people could see the bottle and get some brand recognition that way. So we would have them take those 15 uh, five mils and some reference guides and we'd give them some intro guides so they could start sharing and they're off to the races, right? So, um, Kai, one other thought I was just having about yours. I know that, you know, we've had family stuff and haven't done a lot of other big events, but like Lara Jacobs this year, she took her, um, main builders to one of those Eric Worre events and they made it a team building event and I think it helped them get clear on where they were going in the future and step things up a notch. So things like that are always great investments as well. So I would just say it's just the same um, concept as you're doing with um, like for example, scanning your team for where you need to buy convention tickets. Well, it's the same thing. Scan your team for the needs. You're just doing a needs assessment all the time. Okay, what do we need right here to grow? What do we need to help this go to the next level? And you're doing that needs assessment. You're asking those questions of how can I best support you? And then you're investing in those ways. These are some of the ways that have totally worked for us. Um, as we close up today, I just want to reiterate, um, it's so tempting to, to start, you know, going for all the doodads, right? I know that we just didn't have, we had never known money like this, right? And so when I could, boy, I'm like thinking, I want that awesome car, this awesome boat, this thing, that thing, right? So 
it'll come up for you if you decide now what things you really value and invest in that. And you, you do number one, you invest in yourselves, your leaders, and your team. If you'll invest in those three things first, and when I say yourselves, I mean your personal development, not in your Maserati, okay? Invest in you and your personal development. Invest in your leaders, and then invest in your team, and then go from there. Um, keep the other things where they're meant to be, and make sure your residual income um, wheel is turning, that you're creating massive value all the time. Even when your role shifts in doTERRA, you can create massive value. Um, Freedom is a goal worth going for and a goal worth achieving. Um, as I walked around our backyard the other day and thought about, you know, I own this bush now. I own every brick of this house. Like, I, the stewardship, you know, I, I just want to take better care of it because it's not the banks, it's mine. And the, the same thing applies to, um, you know, everything. We, we get to be um, stewards and have influence and have, um, you know, I guess influence is the best word for um, whatever we choose to attract and create. So um, here's to freedom and here's to uh, liberating others as we open these doors of freedom for all in our circles of influence. Thanks for joining us, guys. Okay. Couple last thoughts. Here's that kit I was showing you that I always use. Um, you can get this on Amazon. You can, it's just basically, you can see all the, you know, I like to give out gifts like that or do incentives like that. This is called the Fit and Healthy Vitamin Box on Amazon. You can buy them in bulk. I bought 100 before. Um, and... I love your ideas on what you're sharing about weekly Zooms and get-togethers for a retreat at convention. Um, don't be, don't get overwhelmed. Your team is going to keep growing. So have some key points at convention where you can physically get together and then do the Zooms just like this one so you can stay connected to your people wherever they are. And then you stay present in that relationship. Most of the time people just want to connect to you. Um, we have never been able to, we have spent a little bit of time initially with our U.S. teams, but not a lot of time after that. And so what did we feel like this summer? Well, let's, let's do a U.S. tour, right? So just be with who you're, who you're with, right? We're going to do, um, informal inspire nights because we've got seven kids and an RV and it's kind of hard to determine how things are going to go. So we're just meeting at parks along the way um, and having informal Inspire Nights. We'll post up uh, some options of the areas that we're going to be in on the Diamond Roundtable. And we just want you to know we love you. We're so grateful for who you are and what you're rocking at. We honor you. I know that this cause is an incredible one. And you taking freedom to others is priceless. So claim freedom for yourselves um, from the principles that we've talked about today, and then go share it with others. Peace out. Love you.